Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today I'm building the USS Massachusetts. Familiar ship, especially to those in World of Warships. Big secondary armament and of course she will have that in this mission as well. The scenario sent in by Tristan Hein. After taking severe damage in the battle with the French fleet off of Casablanca, the USS Massachusetts was sent home for repairs and refitting. It is now sent to the Solomon Islands to counter the Japanese with her big guns after the loss of three US carriers. You are placed under the command of Admiral Halsey and are tasked with providing protection for what's left of the carrier fleet. Soon after arriving, smoke is spotted on the horizon and aerial reconnaissance spots um, pagoda-style masts. Sound General Quarters, Captain, and Godspeed. So, I'm building the USS Massachusetts. The ship must have... Three triple 16-inch guns in an ABX format, 25-inch guns in 10 dual mounts. It must have a ridiculous amount of 3 and 2-inch guns to account for the very heavy anti-air uh, battery the Massachusetts had. Alright, let's get to designing then. Now, the Massachusetts in real life was about 45,000 tons, which, interestingly, in this game, <laughs> is actually pretty small. Um, so we're going to go with the smallest modern battleship hull. She had a speed, as is listed here, of 27.5 knots only. This is something I might have to adjust just to make it more interesting. If I go with a pure historic build, as I've tried with other builds, it just doesn't translate that well to an actual gameplay component. The game is not a simulator. So, before you go and type in the comments, Hey, you didn't get the armor scheme right. Or, hey, the ship didn't have this or didn't have that. Um, I'm balancing it out for gameplay purposes. So, um, modern tower. Secondary tower. I suppose I can move this a little bit farther back. We're going to go with 16s ABX. So, a 16 is probably going to be sitting best on a... Wow. You have to put that there. Oh, never mind, it has a built-in one. 16 triple there and there. I wonder how I'm going to fit all those 5 inches on here. Do those fit on the side? Yes, they do. Sort of. But then the modern secondary tower sort of makes this odd. I would very much like to have a similar sort of secondary tower, but unfortunately not available. So we'll just have to put, I don't know, another 5-inch gun there and there. Can we use the small barbettes over there? I don't want them over there. I want them on the sides. This is uh, in-game one of the older hulls, and it has not yet been adjusted to allow for additional placements slash more flexible placements. It's unfortunate, but it is the way that it is. Um, yeah, let's put some barbette armor on. Let's put a mega funnel down here. Ship's supposed to have a, I quote, ridiculous amount of three and two inch guns. Uh, at this point, it's going to be a ridiculously low amount. Oh, here we go. I can put quite a few in here. I can put some on the secondary tower. Can put some on there and on there. Uh, uh oh. I misbalanced a gun. There is one on the starboard side that is not on the port side. Oh joy. I think it happened when I started placing down secondaries. Yeah, here. There. That's the one. Right. Aft weight of that is 5%. Really? In that case, we're going to have to shift the whole thing forward. Hope that everything attaches to the superstructure. It does. The game is going to start complaining about the secondary tower now. This is something else that I would very much like to see fixed. For some reason, some of the turrets sort of float around the secondary tower. Because if I move this... Sometimes it attaches, sometimes it does not. Anyway, I'm thinking of going with an... Um, 
let's say, a slightly less historic design of the Massachusetts, just so I can accommodate more 5 inch guns. Because I want them there and here. And if I don't put this on a barbette, I cannot have these guns here. The game simply won't allow it. Okay, now we have a heavy front. We put you back towards the stern. No, can't. Move this thing slightly back. Unfortunately, that might not be enough. 2-7. Two, 2-2. Seven, two, two, one seven. Ooh. Yeah, see? That's when the, the turrets are sort of glued to the wrong part. Secondary tower. Don't have enough room now. This is not an easy hull to balance out. Secondary tower. Sit. Guns on there and there and here and here. Or is that the one that keeps malfunctioning? Yeah, for some strange reason you can put it there, but not there. That I do not understand. What if I go for two inch singles? Nope. It's like this single turret slot here for a two inch gun is not modeled appropriately. Don't know why? Don't care, it just doesn't work. Now I have a port weight offset? The nice part about this turret, or sorry, about this uh, hull, is that you can have a lot of guns on it. Uh, the unfortunate part is that if you then add a gun and you can't try, or you, you can't find the gun that's causing an imbalance in the ship, you can basically keep deleting guns up until you find it. Which gets a bit annoying. I still don't have it? <laughs> but I stripped all the turrets off. There, there's no secondary turrets aside from the fives. None? I don't get this. Ah, you. There we go. The game would do with a highlight feature that says, hey, um, this particular gun does not have a counterbalance. Are you sure that you want to run the ship as is, or is that something that you want to adjust? That is something that would be very useful. Pull the turret slightly back. Try and fix the weight offset. And I can put the twos over there. We've got the twos down there. Slight four weight offset, but I'll accept it. Now, armor scheme, range finders. Stuff like this is gonna get pretty heavy, unfortunately. Oh, and I'm still using standard loaders. See, this is problematic. I would have to reduce barbette armor, which is not something you really want to do on a battleship. Um, well, I guess we're going to have to go without the full auto loaders. They're going to be semi auto loaders. Uh, armor belt 7, 14, 7, 3.5, 16, 18. It's not too bad. It is absolutely not historical. And I had to go without the range just to make sure that I can keep this thing <laughs> within the limitations of what the hull should have. Right, TNT. Because um, this ship could do with some immense range. It could do with 28,000 kilometers or 17,000 miles. That's 15,000 nautical miles. If I would put that in, I'd be about 2,000 tons over budget. So unfortunately, I can put this... You know what, I'm just going to ignore it. It doesn't really contribute that much to the gameplay anyway. Heavy shells. That fits. Um, some hydro would be nice, but is pretty heavy for this ship. Because I think it adds a percentage to the main tower. Yeah, main and secondary tower. So unfortunately, no hydro for this build. Uh, any chance I can get a 
sliver more speed? No. Unfortunately not. And this is already a ship which is actually too heavy. Because it says here, um, under full load, the ship was doing 45,233 tons. I'm already about 2,000 tons over that. This is the trouble with trying to build historical ships. Now, I have learned my lesson with underestimating the amount of firepower that the enemy has. We're going to put 19 and a half inches on the turret. And whatever we have left goes towards the conning tower and other vital sections, such as the belt. Okay, not the belt. There. I'm one ton short. That's fine. Let's see if the Massachusetts will perform her duties against two Japanese battleships. All right, the lineup. The Massachusetts versus two battleships, three heavy cruisers, two lights and four destroyers. We do have some assistance from two heavy cruisers, a light cruiser and two DDs, but are they any good? We have the Des Moines and the Cambridge. Des Moines is packing plenty of eight inch guns, some fives, more fives, a load of twos and some torpedo launchers, but is she survivable? Yeah, quite. Almost 21,000 tons, pretty fast. Terrible turning circle, though. Sonar 3, hopefully we'll keep her safe. Now, both the Des Moines and the Cambridge are going to be shielding the Des Moines, sorry, the, the Massachusetts, which is now called the Illinois, because I forgot to rename it. We also got the Vicksburg light cruiser, many bulkheads, a couple of torpedo launchers on her stern. She actually seems to be under fire. Several two-inch guns, good turning circle, and sonar three. That's really nice. And we have the Buck and the Callahan. I want you to join the light cruiser div. And you guys are gonna go and just steady. The destroyers Callahan and Buck, few bulkheads, torpedoes to ten. Oh, that's going to be a problem, because that means I have to be very, very close in. Well, you have to be very close in with torpedoes anyway these days. Otherwise, it simply doesn't work. What do the Japanese bring? They bring... Is that enough turrets for you? Holy. That is seven turrets, sporting three guns each. So she has 21 15-inch guns per ship. Oof. That's pretty intimidating. This is an unusual design. And it's sporting 10 8 inchers. And they're lights. Uh, no, that's a DD. Sporting two 5 inch guns and one single 3 inch gun. So, based on that, I'm thinking we're dealing with torpedo boats. Well, sort of. They got one launcher there, and that's it. Not too intimidating. Ooh. One of the battleships has hit the Vicksburg and seriously tore through her deck, I think. Yeah, bow deck overextended. Or overpen. All right, Illinois, we have some work to do. The Japanese need to be eliminated from this area. Range is 24. I can hit to 30. Why are we not shooting yet? Fire at the enemy battleship. Maybe they weren't targeting the right ship. Normal formation. Actually, let's just follow the battleship as well. Follow the Illinois. Or the Massachusetts, actually. Ooh, they managed to hit the DD? That is some sniper level stuff. Because that's the battleship that's capable of doing that. At 24, almost 25 clicks. Something as small as a DD. Alright. That is pretty aggressive. And definitely very accurate. They're firing 16, uh, sorry, 15 inches. I'm firing 16 inches back. Let's see if those are enough to pen the Japanese decks, at least from this range. Should be capable of inflicting some nice damage. If they're not too angled, that is. 
No, they're not too angled. What is this then? Is that their light cruiser? Because this is their DD. So this is your light cruiser. Ooh, that's a lot of torpedo tubes. No guns on the bow. <laughs> Only guns on the stern. Oh, so I did misidentify. This is their light cruiser. This is their DD. Also very few guns. Definitely more focused on torpedoes, I suppose. Alright, let's charge in. I want those 5 inches in range, which is 12 kilometers out. And uh, we're definitely not there yet. I hope that the Des Moines and the Cambridge can assist as best they can. What? They just hit the... How? Maybe at this point it's just volume of fire. Because we got 21 shells flying out of those Japanese battleships. And of course they have two of those. So it is possible that it is just sheer volume of fire. And they only need to get lucky once with a 15 inch shell to deal an immense amount of damage to the DDs. The Buck was able to pump all of it out. But the secondary tower is gone. Callahan is definitely not going to have the same luck. Because she got hit in a different section. Look at that. Even the Des Moines is starting to struggle. The problem that I have is that I would like to push in. If, if only a little. But I don't have sonar systems on the Illinois. And that makes me very susceptible to torpedoes. Ah, we've got the uh, Choyo. Minimum bulkheads, we can use that. We can abuse that. What's the pen chance? 40%. Reverse? 43.7, but 43.6. It's going down. I'm trying to have the secondaries take out the DD here. These are fairly sneaky. 21 kilometer range, 23 inch torpedoes. You also just torped me. I'm going to have to turn again. Japanese fleet is heading to northwest. Callahan did successfully pump out the water of two of those damaged compartments. I didn't expect her to do that. I thought that she was going to have a serious flooding issue. Speaking of... Illinois slash Massachusetts is taking some flooding. Let's see if I can turn back in now, sort of safely. Let's try to hit the light cruiser instead. It's a bigger target, might be easier to hit. Come on, I need to flood this thing as quickly as possible because it's tearing the rest of my fleet apart. Hold on. Oh no. How goes my torpedo lister again? And torp 3. Maximum starboard rudder. Cue the torpedo beats. You see that? That was some dodging right there. That torpedo was detected by the Vicksburg. The damaged Vicksburg. So she spotted the torp. I think about four kilometers out, which made her very, very fortunate to inform me about it, and therefore the Massachusetts slash Illinois was able to dodge it. If it wasn't for her, I would have probably taken a torpedo. Switching fire to the uh, light cruiser here. All guns. At this point, I don't think I'm going to win this. Even if I try and snipe at range, I won't be able to successfully defeat the Japanese because they they got the shells. They have the two battleships. That's going to make it very difficult for me to try and get close enough. Or rather, no, let me rephrase that. I need to get close 
Because at close range I can have those secondaries work, so I effectively have more DPS. If I go at long range, I'm just going to get torn apart by 42 15 inch guns. They don't even really need to work it. They just need to fling enough of those shells in my general direction. Chance to pen the Japanese battleship is 33%. In reverse, 29, but it is still dropping. Come on. There you go. A few bulkheads. Could be trouble for that ship. Smoke up. Your torps, 13-2. I imagine these might not turn very well. No. Okay, maybe I can exploit that weakness. I just have to try and get the damaged cruisers and destroyers out to a position from where they can make an attack. Heavy damage on the light cruiser. Switch to high explosive. Uh-oh, they are starting to damage my guns. This thing I'm prioritizing right now because it carries 50 torpedoes. They don't have them all ready to go. But those things always reload faster than you would like. That is a ridiculously good spread. Unfortunately, no hit. Damage to the funnel and ship burns. Good. One more good high explosive hit and we have her. Massachusetts fires again. Hits. 1987 damage. And that should... Well... Is that going to cause enough flooding? 2%, 3%? No. We need to do a bit more. That ought to do it. Alright. That's one down. Uh, based on the angle, I'm going to say armor piercing at the Kasagi and the secondaries on the Tochi over there. Buck, smoke up. You're getting attacked. I'm trying to maneuver the Vicksburg and the Buck into a position from where they can actually go on the offensive. Especially with their torpedo launchers. I'm not expecting too much from the Callahan because she's pretty heavily wounded. I shall only do about 20 knots. Damage to the Illinois is starting to really rack up. Chance to pen 36, chance to pen 31. Switch fire to the Choyo. Uh oh. The Chitosa just torpedoed the Illinois again. Rudder damaged and flooding. An issue that I do foresee is that I'm being kept very much on my toes. I have to constantly turn and dodge. And as I'm dodging, I'm exposing the starboard side of the ship. Meaning that I will most likely take a lot of damage from those 15-inch guns. But you just got two more floodings. And with your few bulk sorry, minimum bulkheads, it might might be sufficient. Buck is rushing in at 32 knots, trying to get her torpedoes to launch. The Des Moines. Vicksburg is dead, that was expected. Target the Jitose. Choyo is still flooding. Once again, I am pretty much without sonar spotting. And in 20 seconds, I'm without a smoke screen. And on top of that, these guys are still not in torpedo range. Flooding on the Illinois. Not as bad as the Choyo. Like a 50. Oh, no, 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 no. Ow. <laughs> oh. That was not good. She might get some revenge. Yeah, I destroyed the main gun, but because I'm trying to dodge torpedoes, I'm taking so much damage from those 15s. It is always a gamble what sort of ships the AI brings. And in this case, I got the really bad luck of having these monstrous... What are they? Super Dreadnought hulls? Yeah. With their 15... No, 21 15-inch guns. 
That is just so much firepower that I wouldn't know how to stop it. Um, these are fast torps, so they're very visible. The Illinois can so far draw some fire, but not that much. Torpedoes away from the buck. Buck, get out of here. Callahan still on the way. Range, 14-8. I'm expecting the light cruiser here, the Chitose, to detect the torpedoes and warn the Choyo of the demise. There we go, the Illinois is down. It's gonna mean that the buck needs to get out. But I think that the buck is gonna stop here as it will get killed off by the heavy cruisers. At this point, there is not really any further point in attacking because I don't have the firepower to deal with the battleships. So unfortunately, the Massachusetts is down slash Illinois. Just, just read Massachusetts whenever I say that. Uh, she's down and there's not much I can do about it. Maybe I can torpedo the Choyo or the Kinugasa if it makes a mistake, which it does. Clown. Um, but the rest of the torpedoes are a bust. The Choyo will survive. Kasagi is on the way out. Yeah, so this scenario is a bust. Whatever the AI throws at you is always sheer RNG. You never know whether you're going to get some small dreadnought if you're flying, if you're, if you're flying, if you're using some sort of massive battleship yourself. Um, and sometimes, if I'm using a 47,000 ton battleship like today, they throw back a couple of 60, 65,000, almost 66,000 ton battleships with a massive amount of 15 inch guns. That might not pen every time, but even if they didn't, and if they have to just throw a high explosive, they could be very effective. So, unfortunately, no joy for the Americans today. But still, I hope you guys enjoyed the fight of the Massachusetts slash Illinois. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon for more videos.